and that you can just think about and create as your own. Now, I have a really cool story to run under ro rogue employees. So there's this guy went to went to Patrick Henry. His name was uh, his name was Justin, and uh, he actually got asked to leave Patrick Henry because he was a little bit frivolous with his hacking abilities. Um, he, yeah, he, he came, I met him because he came down to D4 to hang out with some of his buds. He only could stay for a night because, um, he was, um, meeting with the FBI so they could grant him immunity. Um, because, yeah, um, so his name was Justin. He was, he's the coolest guy ever. And, uh, he literally, like, he told me how to shut down the entire 3G network of Percival with a PVC pipe and a handheld radio. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, he's, he's smart beyond this world, like, as far as tech stuff goes. So he goes, he, he, the, the reason why he had to get granted immunity with the FBI was because he hacked on the Pentagon servers when he was 12. Oh now, this is how it happened. He, he said it was an accident, and whether or not you believe him to be true. He said, so um, he put this YouTube video up, uh, like a pro-Bush YouTube video, because the guy's conservative. When Bush was, uh, was, was, uh, like doing, was getting like, a lot of flack for a policy that he had passed. And somebody commented on his YouTube video um, something about assassinating the president. So like a good American, he reported the assassination, this, the assassination you know, uh, uh, intent to the Secret Service on the Secret Service's website. They get over 100,000 of those a day. He reported that to the Secret Service. To, um, took the man off of his comments and told the man, I've reported to Secret Service, I've had to take your comment off, I really support Bush, sorry about that. And so the guy like just totally trash talked him on YouTube and he had to block the guy from commenting on any of his videos. So then like this guy sends him this message like you don't know who you're dealing with, like you don't like I'm gonna I'm gonna just wreak havoc on your IP address. And so him and his buddy who is this other probably like 12 year old who's in like, I don't know, like Norway, because internet buddies are always like random name users, so you never know their age, you know, whether they're male or female. Or So he was hanging out with one of his buddies on an online chat one night, and he notices there's a ton of hits on his IP address that are trying to shut down his network connection and trying to get into his computer. And he notices his computer's like running really slow, so he looks up, you know, like his, his CPU and most of his power is like being automatically diverted to like security connections and, and Norton antivirus and stuff. And he's like, gosh, I bet it's that dude that's trying, that told me not to mess with him. So he and his buddy are like, okay, like, th you know, this means war. Like, you want to you wanna go to war, bud? That's okay. Like, we'll, we'll, play, we'll play your game. So him and his buddy backtrack the IP address, and it's somewhere on the East Coast, and they, so they start hitting his network connection to try to shut it down. And they, they're not getting through. Nothing's really working. So they're, they're going to, they, uh, they, they kind of shut it down for the night. His buddy, his buddy goes to bed wherever he lives in Finland or wherever, like Norway. And so... He has an idea, though. So in Windows 4, the, the fourth version of Windows, I think it was created in, like, probably 09 or something, there's a, there's a, a ad, ad, like, a administer password that if you type in, it will allow you to send a message to that person's computer as if something in the computer had gone wrong. So he basically hacked onto the guy's computer Trigger, like, uh, typed in the guy's administrator password, which he f was able to find, and then wrote a message. In, so you know when like, you're, you're using Windows or Mac and a random box just pops up? Like, you need to update your... So basically the box said, like, you need to update your computer, but it was him talking to this dude with the block text, like saying, like, D buddy, like, you don't know what you're doing. Like, can we just please stop? And the guy responded, like, like I'm, I'm a PMC. Like, I'm on Pentagon servers. You have no idea what you're doing. Like, you're on Pentagon servers right now. And he was like, oh, dang it. And at that moment, at that moment, the phone rings. And it just says 0000000000. 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000. And it says Federal Bureau of. Holy crap. And so he picks the phone up. He picks the phone up. And she's like, uh, hi, is Justin around? And he's like speaking. And she's like, hi, Justin. So we've been noticing that your IP address was on some of the Pentagon servers. And we were just wondering what you were doing. And he was like. <laughs> And he was like, he, he tried to explain it to her, and she was like, yeah, sure, we believe you, sure. And like 35 minutes later, two big black SUVs pull up to his house, <laughs> knock on his door. He opens the door, and they're like, um, sir, you need to come with us. And he's like, I promise you. Like, and he told him the whole story, and the guy in charge was like, okay, so like, if, if, if you know, it, if you work with us to how you got onto the Pentagon servers, because you're underage, we'll grant you immunity. And he was like, okay. So it turns out, it turns out they, they, they backtracked and discovered that the guy who he hacked 
actually was on Pentagon servers illegally because his contract with the government had run out. So he was on the servers even though he shouldn't be. And so they kicked that guy off and found out how to get onto their own servers. All because this one dude was like super tech smart. So anyway, that's an example of rogue employees. <laughs> People that are really smart that get around the government. So when he was 12. Yeah, when he was 12, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, and I, like, I've talked to him again, and he, like, he's just insane. Like, the dude, the dude worked, he, like, he worked for Anonymous at one point. Like, when he was, like, 16 and 17, he was like, yeah, you know, Anonymous and I didn't really have the same idealistic uh, visions for how the company was going to be run. So we separated. And, and, like, and talking as if he was, like, high up in Anonymous, you know, like. So the dude is really cool. He's, and thankfully, he's a conservative. So he doesn't want to, like, you know, ruin the government. But basically, what you should know is on Halloween, every single Halloween, over 5,000 different internet hackers try to break into the Pentagon every single Halloween, like, just because they can. Um, so that's a great example of variables that we can't control and that the affirmative team who you're hitting as negative will never be able to control. Yes? An Anonymous is like the single most, okay, haven't, okay, has nobody seen like the guys with the masks from V for Vendetta? Like, yes, like v Anonymous is the single most powerful, most intuitive, most well-funded hacking group, group in the world. Like they literally have taken down governments because they want to. And they've posted like propaganda on websites that are supposedly completely secure. They wear these masks so you can't see their face. Um, it's really, just look them up, Anonymous, Anonymous hacking group. Would somebody over here raise their hand? It, it feels like yeah, it's really cool. And supposedly, they started out to help companies solve their bugs. They started out as like a third party group, like solving the problems, the security problems. And then they just kind of, they got one too many like foreign members and they just kind of, those guys ran with it. Um, basically. But no. <laughs> well, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm like, racist! Okay. Um, also, one thing you guys should know about, it's called the deep net. It's basically where all the crime in the United States and, other wor and, the, other, and the other nations happens. It's where you can hire a hitman. It's where you can hire a prostitute. It's where you can get people to do what you want. It's called the deep net. And it's basically an area of the internet that is completely um, sealed off to the regular user. You can only get on it if you have special access. Um, it's where a lot of the crime goes on in the United States. And why, like, should we really decrease internet security if they're, if they're monitoring the deep net, if they're, o if they're only monitoring that and not monitoring like you know uh, Americans lives so there's really valid and legitimate questions to how internet security helps solve crime okay so these are all the important cases that we're about to cover and I'm gonna go through them at breakneck speed because I don't want you guys to fall asleep and because you guys can look them up on your own time and there's only one principle that you have to take away from every case so it's extremely simple again if you have any questions raise your hand if I'm going too fast just hold your hands up like a timeout and I'll stop does anybody want to write these down? Like just this, okay. And just so you know how to pronounce them so you don't sound like the awkward homeschooler pronouncing the name wrong, it's Cairo, uh, it's, it's Cairo right here, US versus Cairo. Some people pronounce it Cairo. Uh, then it's Sorallo, California versus Sorallo. Then it's Kylo again versus United States. Then it's Florida versus Hardinas. So that's how you pronounce it, and you don't sound like the awkward extemper who got up there and said Reuters instead of Reuters. <laughs> oh, man. Right, tell me when you guys are done. And as a general note, most of the Fourth Amendment law that we're going to cover is completely arbitrary and back crosses itself, but all of the rules that you're going to learn about apply. So literally, you can have one rule apply and not the other rule, or you can have the other rule apply and not the rule that you don't like. You basically can just pick and choose from the Supreme Court rules that you like and have them apply to your case. That being said, when you go negative, you can have any rule apply to the affirmative team's case and make it unconstitutional or illegal, which is really, really cool. And we'll go over that. Hardings. In Spanish, the J is, is, is pronounced like an H or silent sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we call, you call people Jose or like Jorge, you know, because it's a, it's a J, but it's not pronounced with a J. It's, it's H. 
All right. Everybody wrote it down, written it down? We all good? OK. No. What time is it? Ah, this is the clock right there. Huh. I don't even know what time we're supposed to end, so I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> 10 seconds rule. <laughs> OK, 10 o'clock. Sounds good. All right. OK. Starting with Cats for the United States. Are you ready? Your pen's ready. Cats versus the United States, the location was a telephone booth. Basically what happened was the guy walked into a telephone booth and, and the United States or the CIA or the Federal Bureau of Investigation basically listened into his telephone booth. They tapped the fact that he was actually listening or talking to someone he should have been talking to. The judges ruled that the Fourth Amendment applies to people, not places. That's very important. The Fourth Amendment applies to people, not places. That was the rule basically saying that your Fourth Amendment rights follow you around no matter where you go. That's very important. And that also cross, cross, completely negates the fact that the Fourth Amendment applies to your curtilage, which is a totally another, a totally another rule. So, so these, these things just, you know, they, they cross apply and they completely contradict each other. But yet both rules are true. So this is basically saying, like the question was, does the Fourth Amendment protection against unreadable search and seizures require that police obtain a search warrant in order to wiretap a public payphone? Yes. Or uh, what, was it yes? Yeah, yes. The court ruled that Katz was entitled to Fourth Amendment protection for his conversations and physical control in the area he occupied was unnecessary to bring the, fourth, the amendment into play. The Fourth Amendment protects people, not